Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I'm a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict, and I want to thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my video today. This is a yarn and crochet channel where we talk about all things yarn and all things crochet, so if that interests you, please sit back and watch this video because today, my friends, I offer you another session of Whipping It With Juan. So if you're new to this, all it really is is me pulling out a whip basket, working on a whip while I talk to you about everything and anything that comes to my mind. I kind of like to think of it as us virtually sitting on the same couch, crocheting and just talking and having a good time. So if you have a whip, feel free to grab that, um, maybe grab a snack or something to drink and just enjoy this experience for what it is. Okay, it's a, one of those relaxed sessions where you can just hear me talk Maybe use me for background noise. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Whatever you want to use it for, it's great for you. It's great for me, and I love that for us. So, <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, the camera is tilted down because I want you to see me while I'm crocheting um, and working on my whip. So, you're getting both experiences. You're going to look at me and look at the whip and... Maybe not. Maybe you can just have me sit somewhere and you can hear me talk. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, this is the project that we are working on today. Now, I originally thought this project was done. Um, yeah, I said finished object. I folded it, put it in the makes room. I was going through my makes, you know, for donations and things. And I said, Juan, this is not done. You need to bring this back to the studio. You need to work on that because look at the border. I mean, all the way around, it just goes like that. It's so unfinished. This is very unlike me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple uh, of rounds as a border. So if you look, there are four rows in between colored squares, right? So one, two, three, and four. And here on the edge, there's only two. So in order for everything to be even, I need to go around this blanket twice. And I think, I think it's perfect. If I go around twice, it'll flatten out all of these ridges here and still give us the thickness that we need for everything to look even. So that's what we're working on. I have my Loops and Threads Soft Classic in white. Um, I'm not going with any other color because I kind of want to hide the imperfections of the edges here. So that's kind of what we're going for. So I am going to be using my Furls Hook, my Odyssey six millimeter uh, for this project. And by the way, I connected these squares. I don't know if I said this when I showed this before, but I connected this using, um, I mean, it's a method that I've been using for a very long time. Um, in the chain spaces, or not chain spaces because I don't really chain, but in between the gaps here, I connect the squares by inserting uh, my hook for a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And that's kind of how I join my squares. And it works up super fast. Now the front's flat, right? And then if you turn it around, you have these ridges. Super nice. Love that for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, let me slide back. That should do it. Okay, <laughs> I thought this was done. I'm like, no, 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 Juan, you're not done. <laughs> you have more work to do, Juan. So, just creating a slip knot on my hook. Like so, like that. Let's find a corner and get it started. Okay. I mean, look at that corner. It's not even a corner. <laughs> uh, this was one of those projects that I was like, okay, Juan, you need to whip that out, get it done, move on to the next one. And yeah. So I'm glad I took a second to really pay attention to what it is that we were doing here. So, yeah. Anyway... I um, thought about doing some of the other whips, but I said, you know what, no, I want to do something else. Am I going to chain one in between? No, I'm not going to chain one. 
Let's do that. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Okay. So yeah, just we're going to do white. We're going to go around two times and then this blanket will be completely done for good this time. Um, this blanket here is earmarked for a donation. So as you guys may or may not know, when we're in the makes room on Sundays, those blankets that are behind us, some of them are sentimental and we do keep some of those, but, um, most of those blankets are for donations. Um, once or twice a year, we actually clear that room out and donate everything that's in there except for like the sentimental ones that, you know, we keep for us. But yeah, everything else goes. Um, yeah. I don't know if I said that before, but if in case I didn't, that's, that's what that's about. Um, and the room is full. The room is ready. It's ready. And that's why I was going through all of the blankets. You know, which ones am I keeping? Which ones am I donating? And I came across this one and said, well, this is a donation blanket, but I can't put my stamp of approval on this with no border. <laughs> no border? What? No. I mean, even the donations have to look somewhat presentable, you know? So, um, this one here is going to go to the senior center over here in Newcastle, and it's literally right down the road. I drop off yarn quite frequently to them, and uh, I re recently, the last visit, I said, hey, can I drop off some blankets? Um, I know you guys don't normally take blankets here, but could I? Because you're, you're really close to where I live, and I'd like to know that, you know, the blankets that I'm donating are like right here. So I don't have to go far, you know, to continue delivering these blankets to you guys. She said, absolutely. She said, um, yeah, just call us a day ahead and let us know you're coming. And we'll be more than happy to take whatever you want to give us off your hands. We'll send it down to the laundry department. We'll have them wash it. And then we will disperse them to the residents. And I think that's amazing. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I recently uh, put together a bag of hats. It's in the other room. I may pause and, and get it later. I'm not sure. Or maybe I'll do it during a podcast episode. Um, I put together a bag of hats uh, that I'm going to be donating to um, the Christiana Hospital, the cancer center. Um, the lady's name is Demika, I believe. She is uh, subscribed to my channel. Hi, D'Amika. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to drop off a bag of hats for the cancer department, the oncology department. Um, and that's going to be something that I do on a regular basis as well because they said that I'm allowed to record. That is super fun. Like, I can record going in and dropping them off, um, which is super nice. So... I'm trying to get some things underway. Now, the donation that I did for the school down the street, I'm down the street from an elementary school. I dropped off some yarn before to them. Of course, we're not going to be able to record there because, you know, there's children there. So, um, it's nice when I get the okay to record. I, I kind of like that. So, if it's not for the channel, at least for myself, and then maybe I can share the video with mom to show her, you know, where all of these blankets and things are going. So she, she's going to enjoy that as well. So I can't wait for the makes room to empty out finally. Um, because then I look at it as like a, a fresh canvas, you know, like, what are we going to fill this room with next? You know? So I know there are some blankets in there right now that cannot be donated because they are earmarked for, um, Boggy Creek. So we're going to hold on to those until August. Um, and then the remainder of um, what's in there minus the sentimental things. Actually, we may take the sentimental blankets out of there and put them up in the attic. Take the Boggy Creek blankets, put them in the guest bedroom, and then 
and then go through whatever's left in there. I'm, at, I'm, I'm itching to have that space freed up again. It's going to look awkward, though, on Sundays, like with nothing behind us but empty shelves. <laughs> I don't know. I might have to put a tapestry or something there, or maybe just move us to another room in the house. So for the longest time, we were doing our videos in the makes room because mom wasn't able to like walk around the house. Now, my friends, she's mobile. She's been doing all of the walking and just touching things and getting into things. <laughs> uh, I find her just, you know, randomly going through a drawer and I'm like, mom, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm just looking. I'm like, are you looking for anything in particular? She's like, no, I'm just looking because I just want to look. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> my grandmother used to do that too. I'm just looking to be looking. I bet you my mom doesn't remember that, but I do. Um, my grandmother would always just go through these drawers and just pull everything out and organize it on the table, look at everything and be like, okay, and put it all back just because. <laughs> yeah, those were the days. And now I see my mom doing it and the apple didn't fall far from the tree when it came to my grandmother and my mother. They were like two peas in a pod. And I have a feeling the apple didn't fall far from the tree with me and my mother because there's a lot of things that I do that remind me of my mother. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny how, you know, with some things we're so alike. It's crazy. I love it. <laughs> Anyway, so yes, I'm super excited about the donations. I want to clear the makes room. I want to make room for more projects, um, things to fill the room with. So in six months time, we can go in there and clear out that room and just get everything donated. <clears throat> um, as you guys may or may not know, um, depending on how long you've been with me, my OGs know everything there is to know about that makes room. But um, if you're, you're a recent uh, subscriber, um, I pretty much donate, I donate about 80%, no, about 90% of everything I make. Unless there's some sort of sentimental value, um, it's going to be for a donation. Um, so we donate to senior centers, cancer centers, um, schools, you know, we donate uh, yarn to schools. And things like that so yeah it's just about you know being as active as you possibly can in your community trying to keep the the art of crochet alive by just spreading it out you know sharing the love of crochet I recently picked up some hooks from dollar uh, 25 tree a whole bunch of those and gave them to one of the art teachers at the local middle school and I said, well, I don't know if you guys do this, but if you guys have yarn art here in your curriculum, um, you know, would you guys like these? I mean, they're plastic hooks. They're from the $1.25 tree, but, you know, I don't know what supplies are like. I don't know if this is something you guys do. And she said, absolutely, Juan. We will take whatever it is that you're willing to give us. So I said, okay. I came back to the house. I went into the makes room. So in the makes room, there's a closet, right? And in there, I keep all of my art supplies, like acrylic paint, oil paint, brushes, my easel, paper. So I went through all of that. And I gave her a whole bag of acrylic paint. We did oil paints, um, watercolor. I mean, it was just sitting there. And to be honest with you, like, I need the space. So I'd rather, you know, get rid of that stuff, put it to good use, and give myself more space for more yarn. <laughs> more space for more yarn, my friends, you know? So, yeah, there's that. Yeah, this is better. This is nice. I mean, one more, one more round, friends. It's going to tie the knot. It's going to be good. Yeah. This is so nice. Um, but yeah, so... I love to give back as much as I possibly can. Um, while I am a receiver of gifts, 
and good tidings and positive vibes and things, I also like to pay it forward. And I pay it forward in my own way. So I do just random giveaways, you know. I'll get on a Facebook Live and be like, guess what, friends? We're doing a giveaway. I haven't done that in a little while. But, uh, yeah, I'll just do random things, random acts of kindness. Um, it's my way of giving back. So, yep, you have to pay it forward. So, and I will tell you that I've been the recipient of some really, really great yarn recently, and I am paying it forward. So, definitely giving some out. I'm doing random giveaways. I'm giving away some of the yarns that I've been given just to kind of, you know, spread it around. Unless the person giving it to me specifically says, please don't share, but that's never been the case. Not one person has said that to me. So as long as I don't get that message, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be sharing, you know, when I see it fit. So that is awesome. And another thing about me, friends, is I don't like to advertise when I give to somebody. I recently um, ordered an entire box of yarn for someone. Um, and when I did, I reached out to the person and I said, can you please not tell anyone that I got this for you? And the recipient said, of course, of course, Juan. And, it, you know, I don't do it for clout. I don't do it for um, notoriety. You know, I don't do it for that. I do it, you know, just because I want to be able to give back. Now, I know some some people want to see that. You know, they want, oh, okay, Juan did that. Wow, okay. I get that part too. Um, and I understand where people are coming from with that. But sometimes just random acts of kindness like that doesn't always need to be publicized. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And then the person came back to me the next day and said, you know what, I really appreciate that you said that. And I said, well, I said it because I meant it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I meant that. And they were like, no, I, I really appreciate that because, you know, when you're given something from somebody, sometimes they want you to, like, make, like, a public statement and be like, that person gave me this yarn and thank you so much. You know, it doesn't always have to be like that, you know, so yeah, you know who I gift yarn to the most? My mother. <laughs> she gets all the yarn, my friends. I am telling you right now, like my mom's yarn wall is from me. My mom has not purchased yarn. When was the last time my mom bought yarn? I think we were in Boston. I think it was um, 2014. That's how long it's been. 2014 since she's actually had to go um, to the AC Moore to buy yarn. Yeah, she hasn't bought yarn since then. <sighs> yep, because I've always had excess. Or she'd raid my stash <laughs> while I'm at work. I'd come home. I'd see some, some skeins missing and she'd, you know, tap me on the shoulder. I'd turn around and she'd be signing to me, telling me, Hey, I took your yarn. I needed it for blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, just another excuse to go out and buy more yarn. So my favorite thing to buy at AC more was the Bernat. Um, I used to buy Bernat there and then they had these dump tables well, was it a table? No, dump bins. And they were filled with like value yarn or yarns that were on sale, like the, the bags of yarn. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed digging through all of that. Sometimes the sale would be like a bag for five bucks and it would be like this insane yarn. <laughs> One time I bought seven weight yarn. It was this like ridiculous yellow color. <laughs> with like oh my stars I mean I'll have to show you the blanket one day um, it's a finished object in the makes room right now I bought it's Isaac Mizrahi um, 
yarn and it was on clearance for five dollars for the whole bag and i bought like five bags <laughs> and so i made a blanket with seven weight yarn and it's just this it, it was like i was making a blanket out of rope i mean it was insane <laughs> Oh, my stars. But yeah, I got that yarn at AC Moore in the clearance bin or a sale bin. I don't remember exactly what it was. It's been a while. Um, speaking of AC Moore, I kind of wish <laughs> they were still in business to give us some options, you know? Because remember, there was a time when we had Joann's, AC Moore, Michael's, um, we had Walmart and Hobby Lobby. So you had all those options. And I mean, we still have all those options except for the one, but you know, to have an extra option would be nice, you know? I personally liked AC Moore. I didn't see there was I didn't see that there was anything wrong with them. You know, so it was kind of sad to see them go bye-bye, but yeah. Um, I think I'm they went out of business about a year after I got to Delaware. I can't remember. I remember there was an AC Moore by the job um, at one of the stores I, work, I was working at. And then I just go there one day and then there was all the signage closing. Everything on sale. And yes, I took full advantage of that. I went to the yarn department and of course... Most of the yarn was gone. So I took what I could, made things with it. I don't have any of that yarn left, by the way. I used it all. So, yeah. I don't, I don't know why I considered this a finished object and I didn't put a border on it. Maybe I forgot? I don't remember. I'm like, I looked at this, I'm like, there's no way I could have just folded this up and, oh, it's done. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, so um, it's April 1st, 2024, right? So there's this new thing that um, is being kicked off this month, and it's the month of BOD. So I'm super excited about that. You guys know I've been very vocal in my support of Crystal, as are many of you guys on the YouTube streets, which I think is fantastic. Um, so Jax, my sister Jax, over at Jax's Creations, um, initiated this to um, just to get everyone um, into anything and everything bod. So like whether it's a stitch tutorial or um, just one of her projects, you know, go through her videos and see, you know, one of, see one or see as many as you want. Look at the things that inspire you the most and, you know, make something out of it. And um, she just put up a video today, uh, right before I started recording this, um, where she mentions, um, let me, I think I wrote it down. So create something from Stitch Tutorials or one of her tutorials sent to Jax's Creations. I'll link her channel to the show notes, to the description box. Um, send pictures of your makes to Jax's Creations to be entered into a drawing to win a prize. So that's cool. I'm super excited about that. I, I of course, would not be you know doing it to enter in for the prize, but... I'm so into going through um, all of her tutorials and videos and things. I mean, I've always been a huge fan of her work. Like a few months ago, I did her um, top 20 favorite beanie review. So, you know, she posted a video of her top 20 favorites. I wrote all of her favorites on a sheet of paper as I was watching the video. Because, you know, I watched it from beginning to end, of course, where she had talked about it and the stories behind her favorites and why they were her favorites. So then I went ahead and I started at the top and I made all 20 of those beanies and then I presented it to you guys in a two-part series. Um, and that was the onslaught of me just getting into making beanies. 
I mean, <laughs> I couldn't stop. I was a machine. I mean, doing the 20 beanies taught me a few things because one, I was never really comfortable with making beanies from the crown down to the brim. I would always make the long rectangle, fold it in half, sew it up the side, and scrunch the top. Like, that was my go-to, you know, when, you know, I'd go to make hats. But I learned how to make hats from crystal going from the crown down to the brim. Now, the very first hat that I ever made of hers was when I lived in Boston. We had that terrible snowstorm. It was like 131 inches that month of February um, of 2015. And I had no hat. So I went to her channel. She's a brand new channel at that time. I think she had only been out a year. Um, and she had a hat tutorial on there. And so I was hooked since. Um, but I really wasn't into like making hats then. For me, it was like, okay, I need a hat. I went there, I saw the tutorial, I went on and made the hat, and all was good. But then, um, recently, within the last, I don't want to, well, two, three, maybe four years under my other YouTube account, um, I was watching her tutorials. I watched her, Nastasia, um, and a few other people. And yeah, I was just this machine, just learning all the things. I'm like, okay, so that's how you do that stitch with that stitch. And this is what you should do when you finish a project. And, you know, I'm learning all that. And so, um, when I, I'm backtracking. So, um, when we go to the 20 beanies, um, coming out of that, I learned how to do her ribbed crown. I learned that from doing her top 20 beanies. And so it's my favorite. And I can understand why it's her favorite. Well, one of her favorites, because it is so much fun, you know, and while I was making my beanies, you know, it's, and I mentioned this several times during that whole process, that it's my little nod to bag a day when I do that. You know, because obviously that wasn't my creation. I don't, I don't even know if it was hers, but I learned that from her. So when I make my hats and you see a ribbed crown, that's just my nod to her. You know, because, you know, she, she was my teacher. She taught me how to make all those hats. So, yeah, we all have our, our ways, you know. So instead of like publicly announcing it every single time, you know, I just do it. Instead of saying it, I just do it. Like, that's my nod. So, yeah. And I say all that to say, with Month of Bod, you know, it's about digging into her videos, her tutorials, and seeing, like, okay, what else can I make that I haven't tried yet? You know? And she's got so many hats. Like, the 20 that of hers that I made, it doesn't even scratch the surface. Like... <laughs> There's so many hat tutorials on her channel, every single different kind, you know, so I'm for sure going to dig into that and see like, what kind of hat haven't I made yet, you know, learn a, a thing or two, get some more inspiration. And so month of bot is literally just going in there, making, making the things, taking a picture and sending it to Jax. And then she'll do a drawing and pick a winner for a giveaway. So I'm excited for everyone about that, you know. Um, I'm not doing it for the giveaway. I'm doing it because I just love the tutorials, you know. It's almost like, you know how you have your favorite teacher and then like you're a teacher, but you have a favorite teacher. And you always want to be like your favorite teacher, you know inspired by your favorite teacher like you want to be your own self but a lot of you know what you do is reminiscent of the person who taught you because you know they're that good that's what crystal is to me you know she's just such a great teacher that she's inspired me to want to you know show others how to do things you know 
And of course, no two people are going to be exactly alike, which is great, but, you know, you have to pay it forward when you can and acknowledge the fact that, you know, you didn't come onto this earth knowing all of these things. Someone showed you. So, yeah. And I can't believe how much yarn already is being used for this blanket, and I haven't even gone all the way around yet. <laughs> I'm almost done. Am I? No, I still have one more side. Oof. That's crazy. I don't know. Anyway, you know what else is funny? It's so off topic. <laughs> I brought coffee in here with me, and it was hot, and now it's like lukewarm at best, and I'm not even mad about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drink it just like that. It's fine. That's how you know you have really good coffee when you don't even mind drinking it at room temperature. And as I mentioned before, friends, I prefer my coffee piping hot. Um, no rhyme, no reason. I just like it hot. The hotter, the better. So, I have one side left to go before I take another look at this. Now, technically, it should have two rounds on it because... It will match up with the spacing in between here. So, as I mentioned before, there's one, two, three, and four in between the colors in every direction, except on the edge here. There's only one, two, and three. So, if I do another round, everything will be even at that point, which, yes, that's what we're going to do. So, I just have this one side to do. And then we will go ahead and start that second round, which is awesome. Love that for us. <laughs> oh, my stars. So this pink project, this pink whip situation that's happening, it is almost finished. I'm just waiting for my Mo DEA yarn to run out, and then I'm finished. I thought about putting a collar on it. I thought about, I mean... I have all these ideas. And I said, you know what, Juan? That's not what this is. This was a challenge. It was supposed to be, you know, can you work with this yarn? Because I can't, it hates me. And so I've done that. And now I'm like, okay, well, I've created something. And now I want to take it a step further. But no. So this is going to be part of the It's Just a series. Like, it's just a shawl, you know? It's a very easy to do pattern for, you know, the beginners and the intermediates can, you know, go, this can be a go to for an intermediate to just kind of like, let me bang out a shawl really quick, you know, and yeah, that's the thought behind it. It's very simple. I think it's a six row repeat and there's no complicated stitches. It works up super fast. I mean, if I weren't running two strands together and, you know, trying to keep everything in order, I could have had that done a lot sooner than now, you know. That Mo DEA yarn, you know, it's working up, but it is challenging, you know. It's catchy, it gets knotted up very quickly, but it's getting done, and that's what matters. And if it doesn't like me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm making it like me. I'm like, you are going to like me. You are going to work. If you're going to fight with me, I'm going to get the snips. I'm going to snip this side of the knot and this side of the knot. And then I'll tie the two ends together using a Russian join or, you know, some other method. But fortunately for me, I haven't had that kind of an extreme just yet. You know, my, my situation literally is up. Oh, you're caught on this, you know, just carefully undo it and you're good so and then <laughs> so Sunday right I go to Walmart and I shop for yarn I do my groceries you know and I mean I could go to a million other places to go shopping but I choose Walmart first thing in the morning on Sunday because there's no one there I'm like the only one in the store apart from the employees which I think is fantastic like, I like a very quiet store. I can think. I can plan. I love that. So that's why I go there. Anyway, I'm in there, and 
Well, on one of the end stands, <laughs> I should have taken a picture of it, but I didn't. On one of the end stands was all of the new colorways of the Red Heart All-in-One Granny. Oh, I went ham on that end stand. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me right now? My local Joann's doesn't even have this yarn, and you guys have this yarn, and you have all the new colorways? All the new colorways were on that end stand. And I'm like, oh no. This, the, and, and, okay, it was $7.48 for a skein. And that's their regular price, $7.48. Meanwhile, you can go to Joann's, and it's $9 and some change. I'm like, no, this, this is not even happening right now. Anyway, I helped myself to some skeins of yarn. <laughs> uh, I helped myself to some skeins of yarn. And I may even be going back because they were in stock, my friends. That entire end stand was packed to the gills. Top to bottom, front to back, every, all the new colorways. Like, yeah. Some of them were not new on the bottom, but yeah, all the new ones. I'm like, this is great. This is why I shop Walmart first thing in the morning before anyone can have a chance at touching it. It was a brand new end stand too. You could tell they, they just put that out. I'm so glad I got mine. And talking about Red Heart, right? So Yarnspirations had, for a very short time, some itty bitties. Itty bitty or itty bitty stripes. Yeah, I got some of that too. I mean, I got that news. I was fortunate, you know, someone was looking out for me and they were like, Juan, they just put it up. And I went there and I got some of all of the colorways, I'm waiting for all that to get here. I think I got six or eight of each. So I have all of that coming. And I'm super excited about that. And no, I'm not keeping it all. I'm using it for giveaways. And so, yeah, because I know it's hard to get. Uh, there is one colorway that I am going to keep for myself. It's the rainbow one. I am keeping that one. But the other ones, I'm not. I'm giving those away. So, super excited to share that with my viewers. And mystery boxes and giveaways and things. And also, too, I have speckle up there. I don't, you can't see it, but I have speckle up there that I may be including because I bought that for um, Bag of Days Opera Throw. And I wasn't sure how much I needed. So I made the blanket, and how far did I get? I got, so I did the, the width that she had on her video, but I only went like this far. And <laughs> something told me, Juan, um, you need to get creative with this. And so I did. I went ahead and made an infinity scarf out of it because just the, the pattern that was used for that blanket, I mean, I loved it, but I liked or I wanted to have an infinity scarf made just like that. And so instead of finishing this blanket and then going back to the same yarn to make an infinity scarf, I went ahead and just made the infinity scarf with the navy speckle. And then what I did was I said, uh, let me go ahead and get another colorway because I think she did hers in the cherry um, in the video. It's the cherry one. So I went ahead and did the, the light blue. So I have all this navy speckle just sitting up there. I think there's like 13 of them. Uh, yeah, there's about 13. Um, I have no need to have that many because I'm done doing what I wanted to do with that. I'm not really inspired by that speckle yarn. Um, but I'm going to keep some, but I'm going to give away some as well. So there's that. And I can't wait to see what people make with it. I mean, there really wasn't that much out there in terms of like patterns and things with that speckle. I mean, there were there were a few, but not a lot. I mean... Yeah. And the, I think the thing I like the most about working with that yarn is just how it felt working. I mean, not a, it's not everyone's cup of tea, you know. 
it's rough compared to some of the yarns out there. But I liked it. I do love Red Heart. Tried, tested, and true. <laughs> but I also love my Karen One Pound. I mean, I do love my Karen One Pound. And I get it every time it's on sale. I mean, granted, the colors are muted. They're not exciting colors. <laughs> They're not exciting colors. But I love that muted colorway, that muted theme. You know, I love that relaxed, not so much in your face look, you know, I like that. And then not only that, it's, it is a value yarn that like, if something happens to a project or whatever, I'm not upset at the fact that, you know, I spent all this money on the yarn and my project got destroyed. I buy these when they're like six bucks, you know, I don't buy them all the time. Only when they're down to like six bucks or six something, I'll get some. And, you know, that's how I acquired all of that over the years. So, I love that stuff. Very durable. Easy to wash. Throw in the dryer. Set it and forget it. <laughs> so that's nice. Anyway, guess what, friends? I am at the end of this first round here. Super nice. Let me just go ahead and finish that. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah. So, I think this is going to end the Whip It With One session. Um, I have not looked at the clock, so I don't know how long it's been. I'm guessing maybe like 40-something minutes. 41 going on 42 minutes. How about that? <laughs> That's cool. Um, so yeah, my friends, if this is something you like, consider subscribing to my channel if you're not. Maybe um, hit the like button, you know, let me know you like it so I can continue doing it. Because I'll tell you what, I really enjoy being able to get my work done. So that's so much fun for me. <laughs> so my friends, that is it for this video. Um, as I just said, if you liked this, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and uh, hit that notification bell, of course, to stay updated with everything regarding me and my channel. Um, I'm on quite frequently. As a matter of a fact, you'll see something from me every day, whether it's a community tab post or if it's a live or just a video. Okay, so yeah. That's it from me for now. And until the next one, guys, take care. Bye-bye, friends.